Welcome to the Next Generation Dog Podcast, hosted by Melinda Benbow of Urban Uplander Pet Care and Bethany Carter of Sanguine Moon Kennels. Join Melinda and Bethany as they discuss dog breeds, sports, training, health, and much more with special guests. Tune in weekly for all things dedicated to dogs. Welcome back to another episode of the Urban Uplander podcast. And today's announcement is that we are no longer the Urban Uplander podcast. We are now going to be referred to as the Next Generation Dog Podcast. And in spirit of new things, I do have a new guest coming on. And this particular guest is actually going to be a new host. So we're excited to have her part of the team. She is one of my absolute best friends and has a wealth of knowledge in the dog uh, industry uh, and most specifically vet tech. So thank you so much, Bethany, for hopping on and doing this episode with me today. Yeah, it's a really a pleasure and I'm really glad to be a part of this opportunity. I think we're going to have a lot of fun and I think we're going to offer a wealth of knowledge um, and I hope that everyone can take a little bit away from this. I hope so too, including ourselves, right? As much as we want to bring you all information about all things dedicated to dog, we do want to continue our knowledge and growth as pet care providers. So we are excited. Now, I just want to remind you all who I am. My name is Melinda Benbow, and I'm the owner and operator of Urban Uplander Pet Care here in Indianapolis, Indiana. We provide dog training, basic obedience, boarding, and uh, socialization days in the form of daycare. So Again, I mean, as a trainer, I'm super pumped to have this unique perspective of a vet tech as another host. And Bethany, why don't you go ahead and take a moment and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Bethany Carter. I'm a registered vet tech um, and have been since 2014, but started working in the animal field long before then. Um, I am also uh, starting my new own kennel after a lot of years of research, of gaining more experience from other kennels, and uh, also the vet med science part of it. And I hope to be uh, uniting both medicine and uh, breeders in this very ethical journey of producing very well-bred GSPs that are healthy, um, have that wonderful temperament that we all love and their clown nature, um, but also hard hitters in the field and other sports. Uh, through this journey, I also saw that there was a very big need for photography, um, not only for my own pets, uh, especially in sporting events, but others as well. And so I started picking up a camera and really started enjoying what I was doing and that artistic skill that I found. Um, so originally I started photography just for my own business, but now I outreach that to uh, other events and different individuals. Absolutely. That is awesome. So I know that, you know, your background in vet medicine is definitely why I think we make a good team for this. I think it's going to be really neat moving forward from not just a dog trainer aspect, but a vet tech aspect. I think that's going to be really neat to come together on a lot of things. Um, I'm really excited for your puppies. I know last night we took time to get your whelping box put together and get some pregnancy pictures shot. And uh, Stitch is looking so awesome. I mean, even with a big belly. So again, I'm excited for all of this. I know how awesome you are at photography. It's exactly why I use you for all my pictures as well. So thank you for taking time to share that with all of us. Now, again, I think the importance of why we have you on today is again, we just want people to know who you are and why we make such a good team. Um, so we met, I would say what the height of 2020 midst of COVID on a mm -hmm. social media post. I think we both responded to like a vet tech comment and, or post and you were like, Hey, we look like we do similar things. Can I, I message you and and I think we've been best friends ever since, I'd say. So yeah. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> we're both having our S dogs of Shook and Stitch, <laughs> calling each other's dogs, each other's names. Um, it's think. been a really fun journey. And I still see those pictures of little Shug and her first NAVDA events. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. I know. It was great. You know, so I think what you got Stitch maybe seven months before I got Shug. So we've really got to take this journey together. We've got to participate in NAVDA events, which is 
North American Versatile Hunting Dog Association, AKC Hunt Test. Um, we've done dock diving, fast cat, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. And it's been really neat to have somebody to, to do those things with. I mean, also, you know, we're both females within these areas. So it's been really nice to have, to just to have someone to do these things with. So that's another thing we can definitely do as we move through this podcast is share some of those events that we plan on doing, do some recaps on those events and, and get more people excited about being part of these communities because they are really fun. Um, I mean, even just us meeting each other, what, three years ago now, we've built a whole family of bird dog people, sport dog people, and, and so on and so forth. And like you said, other ethical breeders that have the same goals that we have in mind. So um, super exciting stuff moving forward. Now, Let's really go into more about you, though. So what got you into vet medicine? Is there something that prompted you to want to be a vet tech? Yeah, so as a young child, I definitely yearned for animals. I was the one that um, found animals on the street, and I would bring them home and ask if I could keep them. Uh, my grandmother was a uh, worked in histopathology um, in research for Eli Lilly. Uh, where animals were involved, um, but with proper procedures, iCook was in place to make sure everything was, you know, up to par as far as the use of animals and human or humane use. I have a clicker. <laughs> humane use of animals in research medicine. Absolutely. Uh, and my father followed in her footsteps, again, starting off at Eli Lilly and then switching over to IU. And so IU School of Medicine is where I really found my home. Um, as a child, I remember sleeping on the surgery tables that were heated there um, mm -hmm. if I was sick. But I definitely found a true love and yearning for um, just animals and animal welfare. And uh, I felt a really strong connection. So I continued to let that connection grow. I was a huge collector of dog fancy magazines. My grandmother. Oh, oh me. <laughs> I think we talked about that before. Absolutely. <laughs> my grandmother gave me that subscription every year for my birthday. And well, just a quick segue, dog fancy. I don't know where you went, but this is your call to come back. I'm telling you. Yes, I will do whatever it takes for them <laughs> to come back. <laughs> uh, but I had boxes on boxes of those magazines and I had selected all these different breeds on a breed list of what I would love to own. Um, unfortunately, our family was never in the position to uh, get a purebred dog that was well-bred. Um, so my journey continued to wait a little bit longer until my adult years. Um, and that's when I graduated high school, became a vet tech, um, went through or that schooling, um, got my license, and I immediately started in animal research. And that's where I spent my first seven years was reading a lot of protocols, reading a lot of medicine, but also the more um, hands-on portion was uh, managing a lot of breeding colonies um, to keep up with the need. Um, so I managed mouse colonies, rat colonies. If um, people had issues with getting their animals pregnant, I was the one to research and try new environmental um things like sunflower seeds. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's really interesting how I was able to help a lot of different species. I even worked with pigs and dogs um, and I really just got my hands wet. And I knew that I wanted to be a breeder, but wasn't quite sure how to get there. Yeah. So I moved in with a fellow vet tech who lived on this beautiful farm down in uh, Franklin, Indiana. She owns uh, Cake Creek Farms, where she has bloodhounds, horses, cattle, and goats. Um, <laughs> and so I learned, again, more about those species, their reproduction cycles, uh, gestation, whelping, and rearing all of those species I to make really well-balanced animals. Um, and I just could feel it coming. I knew that it was coming to me and I wanted to keep working towards that dream. So I knew I had to keep gaining experience. Uh, I left um, research in 2019 and I went over to uh, emergency medicine where I work at one of the biggest hospitals um, in Indianapolis. 
and we have a ton of fun, but I am definitely that go-to gal if there's any kind of gestation, neonates, um, or pregnancy concerns, uh, my colleagues will put me on the phone or put me on the case. Um, yeah. And it, it is such a need, unfortunately, through even through veterinarian uh, schooling and vet tech, we don't really educate um, on proper reproduction services. Um, a lot of technicians that I know are, are just kind of... Uh, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. I know that we took this journey of ethical breeding together um, and you definitely got to the point where you were able to actually um, go through and, and, and obtain the puppies and, and conception happened. But, you know, Shug and I had a different journey and I do know we talked about this last night, but one thing that was hard for us was finding a veterinarian that has like intention behind understanding reproductive dog medicine you know it's i think a lot of vet techs are vet tech or i'm sorry not vet techs but veterinarians are caring for pet dogs and family dogs and so oftentimes there isn't always the knowledge that somebody like ourselves who has good intentions behind ethical breeding um there's not a lot of people for us to go to so i definitely get what you're saying when you say um there's a lack of knowledge there yeah, I think there's just a very a much a shortage, one, of just veterinarians in general, but two, specifically the theriogenologists who can appropriately manage these breeding colonies that we have um, for our breeding programs. So it sounds like that's exactly why your vet tech is you've always seen the demand from more of the repo side and... And it sounds like you enjoy it. You know, I, I can't say that I would enjoy after doing it as long as you have. And because it does sound like a very hard job. But I do think that, you know, more vet medicine is in need of um, vet techs like yourself that care about um, the breeding side. I mean, I would ask what sparked your interest in a breeding program. <laughs> but I think that also hits the nail on the head. You know, you have such a, a rich background of it that it's neat to see how, all of your research and experience from rats and pigs and, and other small animals is going to transition to uh, German short hairs. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, my husband has even said that I've, you know, created a monster is what he says. <laughs> We've done some, everything step by step and to the best of my ability and to the best of what current research shows. And it looks like currently we're going to have a large, lively litter, and I'm really excited for it. I, I think I was asking for like six or seven, um, but I, I think she may give me more than that. I think you're right. I see that belly and it is big. <laughs> I think it's stuffed full of puppies. But, you know, your husband's right. Hard work does pay off. And when you take the time and you hit all those ethical checkpoints and you do things with intention, um, that's when good things good things happen. So um, let's, you know, we've talked about the breeding, we've talked about vet tech. Um, I want to know what piqued your interest in your breed. I feel like, especially in the bird dog community, which is such a breed bias community, partially because we're just picking on each other, but you know, we do like our specific breeds. So what got you into GSPs? Yeah, that's a great question. So kind of going back to the dog fancy, I kind of always had a thing for gun dogs. And originally it was a Springer Spaniel. Don't kill me. No, um, mine was a Cocker Spaniel. I get it. <laughs> like what? No. Yes. Not any offense to anybody who has them. No, but as I but develop, I'm like, hunting, you know. <laughs> the ear infections, the long hair. No, thank you. No. Um, so I continued to research. I also worked at our... Um, state fair uh, fairgrounds where we would host lots of different dog events and yeah. I saw GFPs competing in different events uh, like fly ball and confirmation and all the other different events that I worked at and I just had this natural attraction to them um, and so I wanted to learn more and I, I kept growing and learning more and I met other people with GSPs and I loved their GSP and then I started looking at breeders because I learned that there was such a variety 
um, in temperament and size and everything, right? Just like any other breed, yeah. you can find well-bred dogs and you can find... Um, I mean, even more so in your breed because these field show splits, you know, there's a lot of middle ground, um, you know, breeding in there. So it's, uh, yeah. it's a big variety. Yeah. And so I wanted to kind of address that. And it took Ryan and I a couple of years before we decided on a on a breeder um, that kind of met what we needed. And we wanted mentorship being newer in the breed and new to breeding in general um, for our own colony. We wanted somebody that we could refer back to that understood their lineage. Yeah. And so that was very important was somebody who understood who was behind the dogs they currently had. So, I mean, cause you're also, you know, building a lifetime relationship with these people, you know, when you plan on helping advance and continue a lineage, you know, you should really want to work with the breeder that you, um, you get a puppy from. So that's really, mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. And I want that breeder to, to work with me and I want it to be a healthy relationship. I want yeah. it to be one where I can go to that person about anything with that dog. And I think I found that in my breeder. In fact, I, I probably found a little bit more than I bargained for, but I'm grateful for it because we have a tribe um, and she calls me her daughter. She has a bedroom at her house for me and it's all very welcoming. And I couldn't have asked for a, a stronger mentor in this breed. That's awesome. I mean, I've got to personally meet Amy and she is a pistol. I <laughs> love some Amy. Um, you know, I think that, you know, just a side note for people that are searching for puppies and wanting to go to an ethical breeder, you may not plan on breeding your dog. And a lot of people never plan on breeding their dog until they get a dog that shows, hey, this dog's worth being bred, right? Um, so it's very important just to not just look at how great these puppies are, but is this individual someone that I want to be tied to for the next 15 to 18 years of life because that's how long some dogs live. Right. So, right. you know, good breeders are there for the entirety of their dog's life. So it's, it's important that you mesh with the breeder as much as you mesh with the dog. So um, I love that you guys found that in Amy. And again, she, she's so smart about her lines and, you know, it's funny because I don't know GSPs like you guys know GSPs, but I know when I travel for dog sports and I see a particular GSP, I can look at that dog and say, Oh, I think that's from Amy's lineage. And that lets you know that there is a consistency within someone's bloodline. So um, that's really neat to see from the outside looking in. Um, yeah, GFPs are cool. I love your dogs. I think they are wonderful, temperamented dogs. And I'm excited to see how these puppies turn out. Um, you know, Stitch, I think... Stitch is, you know, if, if people haven't got this quite yet, Stitch is the foundation bitch of Bethany's breeding program, Sanguine Moon. Um, and she, you know, her and Bethany have done a lot of work over the past two to three years. Um, shows and sports and all that fun stuff. Do you want to um, tell us a little bit of the activities you have got to participate in and, you know, what's been for fun? What actually gets, you know, contributed to, um, you know, proving uh, to be a, ethically bred dog and all that good stuff yeah so um I want to start off with the fun titles because they were <laughs> fun and I enjoyed them so much and I think she did too um one of the first things is we got dragged in by our poodle friends for fast cats um and that was just so fun watching her really just run towards me um this is an event where it is just I think it's like a quarter mile or less but it's like a hundred yard dash cat. or so yeah, it's like a trash bag on a string and it literally zips by and you can see in the photos that Stitch is not looking at that bag. Her <laughs> eyes are locked on me and that is my girl. Um, and so we it was just fun to see how fast she could run um, and how consistent she was running. Most of her speeds are between 22 and 23 miles an hour. Um, so almost a, a school school zone is yeah absolutely it's more than some school zones i would say you know You're right so she's a speeder I, I love that and you guys got yeah. us sucked into that as well we were like <laughs> we did let's see what this is all about and it is so fun it is um one of the other fun ones that we did but i think also kind of feeds into her versatility 
was dock diving. Um, we noticed at a very young age, first of all, let's go back. Amy does a great program to make sure she introduces dogs to the puppies to the water very early on. And so water is a friend of Amy's puppies. Um, <laughs> and so from just a few months of age, she was leaping into the water. And I knew I had to do something with that drive and that energy. And I couldn't just let that go to waste. So um, she loved water retrieves, whether it was a bird or a dummy. And um, we fed into that. And we, you, I think you and I went on a few dock diving adventures too. We took a class <laughs> through Canine Alpha U. And then we took with um, Alicia Tomac. Yeah, uh, we drove to Ohio and got to do some jumping with her. That was so fun. Yeah, and that really kind of solidified what we were doing and where we were going. So yeah, I, I got to that. see Stitch at that point, and I was like, so how, why haven't you put her in a competition yet? She yes. is amazing. Yeah, even at our puppy class uh, through the Alpha Canine U, he told me, he goes, she's beyond novice. Just go take a, go do it. Go turn in your registration and go do it. Yeah. So I finally got the courage to go and do it because I was going, I didn't know anyone. Um, and we did, we ended up uh, with my veterinarian actually um, and her golden retriever and I went and we got a title. We got a doc master our first time out. Her six mm -hmm. and a half week. Um, so we plan on continuing that. She's a huge water retriever. Um, in addition, we also did a junior hunt because that was quick and easy, um, along with her NAVDA natural ability test as well. Uh, we don't plan on stopping there, though. Um, we have some future goals of doing a senior hunt and uh, UT. We also play in NASTRA, the National Shoot to Retrieve Association. These are uh, trials that the dogs kind of have to go through the whole thing um, uh, finding a bird holding that point, uh, the bird is flushed and the bird is retrieved and it's on to the next one. Um, so she got a second place in an amateur trial there. And after getting so much great feedback that my dog had a lot of potential, we just needed to get it there. Um, I did decide to go ahead and breed because uh, she has a lot of false pregnancies in her previous heats. And I would like her womb to be um, very young and ripe and healthy versus waiting until some of those additional titles that I know that she will achieve. Uh, so we bred this time uh, with a, a male that I think really compliments her. He's also um, part of that shooting star lineage that Amy holds. Um, he is a senior hunt. He just got his utility prize one in NAVDA. Um, he also is a duck diving fool. Um, with his Doc Master, his Doc Master Elite, and his Hydra Dash. He's currently the top GSP for several years in a row now in Hydra Dash. That's awesome. Speed. So it should be a really fun, fun litter that should be willing to do just about anything that is asked of them. Yeah, I mean, Stitch is so versatile. And, you know, for anyone who may be new to this terminology, it's something of bird dogs you're going to hear all the time. Versatile, versatile, versatile. We, I mean, most of us, I don't want to speak as a collective, but I know at least you and I and a lot of other next generation dog people love having a dog that can do more than be in the field. Obviously, we want them in the field as that's what they're bred to do and they're amazing at it. But knowing we can do more that they can enjoy it's awesome, you know, so when we talk about purposeful breeding, you know, you have done a wonderful job at not just collecting titles, but showing that your dog does excel in these things. And you're right, I do think breeding should happen young, you know, they're in prime condition, prime health. Um, and I think a lot of veterinary or reproductive veterinarians would definitely agree with us on this. Definitely a topic I want to actually dive in and talk about with um, a guest in the future, but I'm excited for these puppies. They're going to be amazing. Stitch is great. Her temperament's great. Her hunt ability is great. And again, she is so versatile and good at so many things. So 
Um, as we move on in this podcast, we are going to do another episode where we talk a little bit more about your breeding program. I really want to dive in and tell our listeners more about the ethics that go into breeding GSPs, what makes a purposeful breeding program, um, and, and how you have set yourself and your dogs aside from maybe other people who are doing the same thing. Um, so that will be our next episode. We also have other ones coming up to dive more in on these dog sports. We want to inform you of the listeners more of what we do but we also want to get you guys excited about doing them so if there are any dog sports you are super interested in and definitely forward that to us so we can make sure we take time to do some episodes about them um but for today bethany i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up i appreciate you coming on and telling us more about you i think this is gonna be an awesome podcast doing it together um we do a lot of stuff together we travel together and we've taken this journey together so why not do the podcast together? Why not? <laughs> Make it perfect so, sense. Absolutely. So thank you all for tuning in. This was so much fun, Bethany. Thank you again. And until next time, we are Bethany and Melinda dedicated to all things dog. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Next Generation Dog Podcast. Weekly episodes are released on Fridays on Spotify and YouTube. Please follow the Next Gen Dog Pod on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook. For even more content dedicated to all things dogs, follow Urban Uplander Pet Care and Sanguine Moon Kennels on Instagram and Facebook.